Hi guys, it's Miss Phipps here and today we're going to be doing another video on A Christmas Carol. Um, today's focus is Scrooge's treatment of Bob. So we're going to be thinking about um, the way that Dickens presents Bob Cratchit. This is the first time that we meet his character. Um, how he presents Scrooge as an employer and Scrooge's treatment of his clerk, Bob, and also thinking about, you know, how these two characters are juxtaposed and also what Dickens's intentions were, you know, why did he present um, these characters in this way and why did he have Scrooge treat Bob in the way that he does? Um, so the first thing we're going to do is read through this extract from stave one. Um, there is a little bit in between that I have cut out because there are two separate parts that I want us to look at. Um, but it would have taken too long to read through the whole thing. Like last time, I will give you the option. You can either pause the video now and read through this extract yourself or we'll read through it together. So it is up to you. The door of Scrooge's counting house was open that he might keep his eye upon his clerk, who, in a dismal little cell beyond, a sort of tank, was copying letters. Scrooge had a very small fire, but the clerk's fire was so very much smaller that it looked like one coal. But he couldn't replenish it, for Scrooge kept the coal box in his own room, and so surely as the clerk came in with the shovel, the master predicted it would be necessary for them to part. Wherefore, the clerk put on his white comforter and tried to warm himself at the candle, in which effort... Not being a man of strong imagination, he failed. At length, the hour of shutting up the counting house arrived. With an ill will, Scrooge dismounted from his stool and tacitly admitted the fact to the expectant clerk in the tank, who instantly snuffed, out, uh, snuffed his candle out and put on his hat. You'll want all day tomorrow, I suppose, said Scrooge. If quite convenient, sir. It's not convenient, said Scrooge, and it's not fair. If I was to stop half a crown for it, you'd think yourself ill-used, I'll be bound. The clerk smiled faintly. And yet, said Scrooge, you don't think me ill-used when I pay a day's wages for no work. The clerk observed that it was only once a year. A poor excuse for picking a man's pocket every 25th of December, said Scrooge, buttoning his great coat to the chin. But I suppose you must have the whole day. Be here all the earlier next morning. The clerk promised that he would, and Scrooge walked out with a growl. The office was closed in a twinkling, and the clerk, with the long ends of his white comforter dangling below his waist, for he boasted no great coat, went down a slide on Cornhill at the end of the lane at the end of a lane of boys twenty times in honour of its being Christmas Eve, and then ran home to Camden Town as hard as he could pelt to play at Blind Man's Buff. Okay, so um in this extract, we can see that, well, firstly, we can see the way that Bob is treated by Scrooge. And then we can see this conversation between Scrooge and Bob where um, they are discussing Bob having the day off for Chris to celebrate Christmas. Obviously, Scrooge will not be celebrating Christmas himself. Um, when he's dismounted from his stool to shut up the counting house, he does so with an ill will. So we can see that Scrooge is reluctant um, to close at all. If it was up to him, he would work through the whole of Christmas. He doesn't really care about spending it with family. He just wants to make money. But he needs to give his clerk um, the day off. Obviously, he's not happy about it. He says that it's not fair. Um, and, is you know, he doesn't really want to pay Bob um, for not being there. He's very reluctant to do so. But he does say that Bob can have the day off. Um, so... First thing then, initial ideas, I just want you to answer these three questions. So pause the video um, and just write down some initial ideas. What do we learn about Bob Cratchit in this extract? What do we learn about Scrooge's treatment of Bob from this extract? And why do you think Dickens presents Scrooge and Bob in this way? So pause the video now, give this a go. You only need to really write a sentence for each. Okay, so what do we learn about Bob Cratchit in this extract? Well, um, we learn that Bob works for Scrooge. We learn that he is poor. Um, you know, there are quite a few clues in there that suggest to us that Bob is um, an embodiment of the working class in Victorian England. And on the other hand, we learn about Scrooge. Well, we learn that he um, is, a, as an, uh, is an embodiment of um, the wealthy capitalists within Victorian England. He doesn't treat Bob well. He keeps him in a dismal little cell. Again, like we were looking at um, last time, the way that Scrooge completely cuts himself off from the rest of society. You know, him and Bob are very segregated and um, he doesn't even refer to Bob by his name. He refers to him as the clerk. 
And why do you think Dickens presents Scrooge and Bob in this way? Well, he uses these characters within the novel um, to kind of represent the two different ends. You know, we've got Bob, who represents all of those people like him and like Dickens himself, who um, were living in poverty. And then we've got Scrooge, um, a representation of all those wealthy capitalists who were greedy and selfish and ignorant to the plight of the poor. So that is why Dickens presents them in this way. So we're going to pick apart this extract a little bit more. And there are six questions I would like you to answer. Um, pause the video and give these a go. It would be good if you could try and be answering them in full sentences, taking words keywords from the questions and really thinking about picking it apart to think to look at the way Scrooge treats Bob and the way that these characters are juxtaposing okay so give this a go pause it now and we'll go through them one by one in a minute okay so number one then what does the extended noun phrase dismal little cell suggest about Bob's working conditions and treatment of his clerk what does the noun cell have connotations of and what else could it be suggestive of well dismal little cell you know the most uh, obvious interpretation of that are the adjectives dismal and little and the fact that they show how unpleasant bob's working conditions are much like the working conditions of many poor people in london during this time um we can see that scrooge you know he has the power to decide how Bob is going to work and how he's going to treat Bob and he makes that conscious decision to put him in this dismal little cell he makes the conscious decision not to give him any coal for his fire um and you know he makes the makes the decision to treat him badly so it illustrates for us how awful Bob's working conditions are as a working class um man in Victorian England um, but also, if we dig a little bit deeper, we can think about what the noun cell has connotations of. Well, it has connotations of um, a prison, so therefore could represent the way that Bob is almost, he's imprisoned by Scrooge as a capitalist. You know, he is trapped in poverty by these capitalists like Scrooge, who had the power to make his um, working life easier or harder and so therefore, Bob is imprisoned by poverty and imp imprisoned by these capitalists. Um, Scrooge later on, you know, it could be a reference to Scrooge's attitude towards the poor. He thinks that, um, the, he says later on, are there no prisons? Which is his attitude, his attitude towards the poor is if they are poor and don't want to work, then just put them in prisons. Um, so again, it could be representing Scrooge's attitude towards the poor and the fact that he would happily just have all the poor in cells, in prisons, you know, off the streets. They are merely surplus population. Um, so it could represent that as well. Uh, number two, Scrooge had a very small fire, but the clerk's fire was so very much smaller. What does the comparative adjective smaller suggest about Scrooge's treatment of Bob? Well, Scrooge has a small fire himself because he's so miserly and we already know that he enjoys being cold. He keeps his um, office cold even on the hottest of days, even at Christmas, he keeps it cold. We know that, but Bob's fire is very much smaller. So again, uh, the most obvious interpretation is that Scrooge doesn't treat Bob very well. He doesn't give him fire and it's not they're not equals. It's important for, Scroo for Scrooge to... Um, show that they are not equal. You know, Bob is poor, so he gets a smaller fire. And it could represent Scrooge's general attitude of the poor, that they are smaller than he is. They are worth less. They are more insignificant than he is. Um, and that's a representation of many capitalist opinions during that time, that the poor were small and worthless. Number three, what is the significance of Scrooge only referring to Bob as the clerk? Well, I think that it shows... Scrooge's dehumanising opinion of Bob. Uh, he he dehumanises him and takes away his identity. He is merely just another poor person um, in London during that time. It also shows the way that, uh, shows Scrooge's ignorance towards the, the poor. You know, they don't have an identity and it keeps Bob um, and Scrooge 
segregated still. You know, Bob, uh, Scrooge has the opportunity to know Bob, to know about his problems, to know about his life, to know about his plight. But Scrooge chooses not to know those things. He's ignorant, but he he's almost like he wants to remain ignorant to the poor. Um, so he doesn't let himself get close to Bob and again dehumanizes him it takes away his identity he's merely just another face of a another poor person in london um what is the significance of the juxtaposition between scrooge's coat and bob's lack of coat well it's clear isn't it that um scrooge can afford to buy a coat bob he can't he is poor um and he can't afford to buy a coat and he has this white comforter. A comforter is a scarf. Um, maybe the fact that it's white represents Bob's kind of his purity, possibly, um, in comparison to Scrooge. Number five, how does Dickens juxtapose Bob and Scrooge through the way they leave the counting house? Moreover, how does the noun growl present Scrooge? Um, so it says that Scrooge um, leaves with a growl. Um, showing his kind of, even at Christmas, he is miserable and miserly and unkind and hostile. Bob, on the other hand, he uh, ran home to Camden Town as hard as he could pelt. So we can see that Bob is, he's juxtaposed with Scrooge here because he is excited. He leaves, he runs, he's desperate to get home to his family because the most important thing to Bob is his family and being with them at Christmas time because he loves them. And um, Scrooge, on the other, ha other hand, he's almost animalised by Dickens. You know, he growls. Um, he is kind of a typical um, way for Scrooge to react. Whereas Bob, even when he is treated so badly by Scrooge, he is still compassionate and kind um, and happy. You know, he appreciates what he's got. Um I think as well, the fact that he runs home to Camden Town. Camden is a um, an important place of reference in the novel because um, Camden was blighted by extreme poverty during the Victorian era. And not only that, but it was very far from uh, where Scrooge's counting house was. It was very far, so it shows that kind of distance that the working class had to travel um, it's a reference to the, one of the impoverished areas in um, London and also is where Dickens um, spent some of his life growing up as well. So he um, had seen, obviously, what it was like in Camden for people like Bob and obviously constructed this character and Bob's um, family and his home in Camden to show his poverty. Um, last one then, how might the way Dickens presents Scrooge's treatment of Bob act as a critique of society? Well, like I have already said, um, Scrooge is a typical embodiment or an embodiment of a typical um, wealthy capitalist in Victorian England. So Dickens was criticising the way that the poor were treated by the rich. Um, you know, he saw it himself growing up and living in London, growing up in poverty, but living in London during this time, he saw how the poor were treated. And therefore he shows that through these characters of Bob and Scrooge. Um, OK, so hopefully these questions have helped you to develop your ideas a little bit more or maybe just consolidate the ideas that you already had. Um, what we're going to do, like last time, I'm going to give you two quotes that I would like you to um, analyze. So you're in an exam. Here's your question. Starting with this extract, how does Dickens present Scrooge's treatment of others? That is not the question. Uh, yeah, okay, fine. I thought I'd changed it, but that will do. Um, treatment of others, well, treatment of Bob. Um, here's your first one. The door of Scrooge's counting house was open that he might keep his eye upon his clerk, who in a dismal little cell was copying letters so write this quote down and spend a couple of minutes just annotating it like what methods are you going to pick out what are you going to say think about what you've already um the ideas that you've already come up with based on the tdqs that you did earlier um do that now pause the video and do that we'll go through it and then we'll do another quote okay Cool. So um, the first thing I would talk about is the way that he keeps his eye on Bob. Um, so he's constantly exerting his power over Bob. He doesn't trust necessarily what Bob's doing. He's always 
maybe remind as a reminder to Bob that Scrooge is in charge and he he maybe he doesn't trust Bob and we already know that Scrooge very much keeps himself separated and segregated from people um you know he, the only reason that he is um involved with Bob at all is because Bob works for him so he's merely there to be exploited by Scrooge um I would talk about the adjectives dismal little um they illustrate Bob's terrible working conditions and act as an illustration of the working conditions um, for the poor overall. Scrooge exploits Bob, dehumanises him by putting him in the, these horrible working conditions, really, like an animal would be. Um, and obviously, like we've already discussed, I talk about the noun cell and the connotations that has um, emphasises the way Scrooge has distanced himself from Bob, but also the way he has imprisoned Bob, um, like I said earlier, to exploit him and use him for his own gay, personal gain, um, possibly reflects his attitude towards the poor. So when he says later, are there no prisons? And could also be a metaphor for the poor being trapped and imprisoned by poverty and capitalism. So like I was saying earlier, um, here's your second quote. Small had a uh, small Scrooge had a very small fire, but the clerk's fire was so very much smaller that it looks like one coal. Um, again, write this down, pause the video, note uh, some annotations and then replay the video to see what I have said about it. OK, so I would talk about the noun phrase the clerk um, and how it illustrates the way Scrooge dehumanizes Bob and the impoverished in general. Um, Scrooge doesn't want to know Bob or his working uh, working class plight, just like he doesn't really want to know any of the any of the poor. I'll talk about the adjective smaller, um, shows Scrooge's greed and selfishness. You know, he has a small fire himself, but also how much smaller he believes Bob to be. You know, Bob is small and insignificant in comparison to him, and it reflects the way he looks down on the poor, um, a reflection, I should say, of the rich. Um, you know, a reflection of the rich the riches attitudes during that time um okay so you're going to have a go at answering this question um if this was your exam question you'd obviously treatment for others where you could talk about um the treatment of fred the treatment of um bell in the past um and then you could also do uh start with because obviously you're starting with this extract so you definitely need to be talking about other moments this extract would talk about the treatment of Bob. Um, so here's our success criteria. You want a conceptualized approach. Well, what is your main idea going to be about the way Scrooge treats him? Well, I'm going to talk about the way that um, Scrooge treats him, um, like his cruel treatment of Bob and the way that he's dehumanized as just uh, another, per another poor person. Um, I'm going to have my embedded quotations. I'm doing the one about, what am I doing? Um, about the small fire so you're going to do the one about the cell um analysis and methods well we've already uh, looked at picking out specific adjectives and nouns and what they symbolize or what they represent and also the way that dickens uses characters that's a method as well you know he's using them to get across a message to his reader um adding layers of meaning well you know it could mean this thing but then it could also mean this and Dickens' intentions, you know, why he wanted to present the character, characters in this way, why he was using these particular methods. Um, so here's my model for you. It would definitely be helpful for you to read through this first, just so you can see the sort of things that I've said. You know, you can have um, a similar, if not the same, conceptualised approach, um, but you'll be doing different a different quote and therefore looking at different methods and you'll have different layers of meanings. You know, your intentions might be similar, um, your intentions, but what you write about Dickens's intentions might be similar. Um, but yeah, read through my answer and then give, give it a go yourself using the other quote that I've given you. All right. Um, thanks for watching. Hopefully this has been helpful in consolidating um, what you've already looked at, but maybe you learned some new ideas as well and came up with some of your own um, interpretations, which is great. So thanks for watching and I will see you next time.